Well, didn't expect my first video in here to be an unboxing video, but this item right here in this box, very interesting and a very unique item. It has some immense historical value, and aside from that, it's just a really interesting item on its own. So, I figured, you know, this... The first video I plan on doing is on World War I German gas masks. So, because of what this item is, being a World War I German gas mask, I think this makes a really good sort of introduction video to that, and a good standalone video. So, you know, that's the first video I'm doing here. Uh, well, first proper history video. So, um, you know, the Swiss Army knife, because I learned that I have a tendency to cut myself with the K-bar. Let's go ahead and, uh, open this thing up. And all I'm doing, so I want to share with y'all a bit of a funny story about, um, buying this. I, uh, was on eBay. I think someone had posted a, uh, different mask in the, uh, r slash gas mask discord. And, um, I was looking at it. This mask was sort of in the, uh, I suppose recommended section, whatever the proper term for that would be on eBay. And I saw that, and it was something I'd wanted to get for a while, uh, perhaps not something I'd been actively seeking out, but something, it had been on my radar. And I was like, oh, that looks good, I'm gonna take a look at that, see what the condition is and everything. And I went over to it, and it was good condition, but I realized I knew the guy selling it. Turns out he was a member of, um, Wolf of 1918's Discord server, and I'd seen some of his other eBay listings, so... You know, it's not some insane story, but somewhat amusing. Someone may, uh, enjoy or appreciate that. And this is the dangerous part right here. But he's, he's actually been a very major, very big help in, um, research into this. Let's see if I can... It's always satisfying when you can just, uh, rip it. Oh, this is taped very well, which is actually, um, very, um... It gives me very high hopes for the condition of the item not having been shipped and everything, so... This is gonna be a bit of a tedious thing. No, like I said, he, he's been a very big help in, um, identifying this. This is probably the least safe way I could open this. But, there we go. I should close the knife before I injure myself, and I'll set it back here so y'all can't see it. So, let's see what this is like. Lots of, uh, actually, let me, um, tilt and show, lots of bubble wrap in here, which is a, a very good sign. I've had stuff packaged with newspaper a lot. I can't remember having anything packaged this way. There's a bit of that cold smell kicking in, which, depending on who you ask, is either the greatest smell of all time or the worst smell of all time. And here we go. Let's see. Beautiful canister. Beautiful numbering on it. 193, probably some kind of unit, I would guess. Um, just want to make sure there's nothing else hidden away in the bubble wrap. Doesn't seem to be. So, let's give it one good pop. Nice. I should check this chunk over here. Nothing. It's always good to make, uh, to be sure with that. So let's crack this open. It does still have a little bit of the, uh, I suppose, leather carrying strap on it, which is very good. So, it's a bit hard to open, which is a uh, partial why on this one. I leave, I generally leave it cracked. This one is a bit easier to get open. Some uh, serious rust on this, but ah, not bad. I gotta stand up for this. Hopefully, don't send this thing flying. Now, you'd, you'd think this would be easier, but there's always some kind of unforeseen complication. So, um, I messaged the guy I bought this off of, said, Hey, I can't get this canister open. You got any tips? Right after I sent that, get the thing open. So that that's amusing, but, um... Let's see, anything in here? This was a good thing to check. Nothing, but I'll show that off in a moment. <sighs> There's the smell you warned me about. Whew. 
If y'all if y'all have never opened up a little mask before, which I apologize for my um potentially horrible pronunciation. If you've never opened up old German gas mask, there there is no smell quite like it. And oh, I can't call it a good smell. I love the smell of this old stuff, but oh, this is strong. Let's get this out. So here is the mask. This thing seem, this is a size A2, so this is actually the same size as this one, uh, same 193 marking. In fact, to uh, show off the 193 marking, let me, let me get over there, let me twist this around. So it's the same 193 marking. And um, you'll notice a different strap here. And you'll notice this exhale valve, which I'll, I'll have to put some B-roll footage in, but this mask is lacking that. And you'll, you may notice some different lenses. Uh, this is the GM18 later mask, this is the GM17. And let's see inside, it's got this little strap in here that I was um, unaware actually existed on one of these, and this has a magnificent condition neck strap. Uh, as you can see, the one on this mask is detached. Then let's get the uh, filter out. This is a um, FE37 filter. It looks to be in fairly decent condition. Is there anything in here? Um, if you look down at the bottom, I don't know how well it's going to show up, but there are a few scraps of um, some kind of a strap, or perhaps the old instructions, or maybe a cleaning cloth, something like that. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but a few, a few scraps of something or other. So, let's set that there. Let me see if I can get the filter open and attach it to the mask. Right, so this is the earlier um, Bakelite, or not, not the, the, the earlier metal um, filter cap. They later used Bakelite ones, and um, some kind of ring, I guess, to um, line the thread up. I don't know what that ring is made of, so I'm not really going to mess with it, because some of this old stuff is dangerous. Alright, so, uh, took a long break, as in, um, this is the next day I'm filming. I am wearing the same shirt I wore yesterday, I'm just wearing it for shooting this, so, uh, make that what you will. <laughs> I've, um, put together just some notes on the uh, topic so I can make sure I have all my information on the masks right. I've taken this off the head and I do not have this on the head because this one, as I learned yesterday uh, in my original filming of this, is incredibly hard to get on the head. I cut out seven minutes worth of me trying to get it on the head and I have the head right here. Y you can see the damage it did to the head. I actually think I damaged the head more than I did the mask, so that is some consolation, <laughs> but, um, just refilming this just to make sure it is as good as possible. I also took, um, the time to make sure I had lighting just a bit better, positioning, positioning just a bit better. I'm not sure how good everything is, but hopefully it will, uh, work out fine. Yeah, you've had the, uh, unboxing portion, now it's time to talk about the history and the equipment. And the first thing to start off with, let me move forward a little bit, the first thing to start off with uh, is the history of the masks, specifically how this mask came to be. Now, as I believe I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be doing a much longer video on World War I gas masks, so specifically World War I German gas masks, uh, hopefully my next video. So, I'm not going to go super in-depth uh, except on this mask, because there's a lot to go in-depth on this mask on. Um, the main focus is going to be on the equipment itself, so it's just going to be a brief rundown. The, the GM series of masks in World War I started off with the GM-15, the gummy mask. Uh, this was a um, rubber mask which had three variations, um, the names of which are escaping me, but I'll do my best to stick them up on screen. The uh, GM-15, of course, created in 1915, was used until 1917 by the German army, wherein it was replaced by the GM-17 later mask. The uh, GM-15 did see continued usage until the end of the war by the Austro-Hungarian military, but today's main focus is on the German military. 
Like I said, the GM15 was replaced by the GM17 Leder Mask, of course, translating to Leather Mask. It's a very easy uh, German translation to understand. The yeah, GM17 was the main German mask of the war, um, certainly the most iconic German mask of the war, and arguably the most iconic mask of the war in general. It uh, saw continued usage post-war by the Reichswehr forces of the Weimar Republic, along with, I've got it written down right here, it saw usage in the war by Austro-Hungary, it saw usage post-war by the Hungarian Empire, by the Hungarian, by Hungary, my apologies, after the Austro-Hungarian Empire fell, that's why I messed that up, and it also saw usage by Spain. Now the GM-17 Leder Masca was not replaced, but uh, continued into the GM-18 Leder Masca, which we have right here. The Gas Masca Respirator Wiki does say that it was replaced, but I'm not seeing much on this really being used all that much. I don't I don't know the extent to which it was used, so I really can't say that it replaced the GM-17. The, the GM-18 saw usage in World War I by the Imperial German Army, saw usage post-war, much like the GM-17, by Reichswehr forces, and in World War II was used by both the Wehrmacht and the Luftschutz, which were the um, air raid civil defense unit within um, Nazi Germany. I don't know the uh, exact extent it saw usage by the Wehrmacht. I know it was um, basically a replacement mask, if you will, or more accurately, a mask for reserve troops. Uh, whatever the specific thing was, I'll edit it on screen because the exact thing is escaping my mind. And I know that in the Luftschutz it was replaced in 1940, at which point it was given to Romania. The GM-18 also saw usage by Poland and by Lithuania, though the Lithuanian one was the um, unmodified wartime model. I don't know what it was for the Polish uh, forces that used it. Now, I wish I could uh, make this mask into a Reichswehr display, because I think that would be really cool to track down one of the Reichswehr World War I helmets with the decals on them and everything, but unfortunately it has the World War II FE-37 filter, so I can't really do that. I will say that it has, uh, on the canister, it has the 193 marking, which is also on the mask. I'm unsure exactly what that means. At the time of filming, uh, no one has responded uh, to me um, asking if they have any ideas uh, with any answers, so um, should I get an answer by the time this video is uh, being edited, I'll edit it in. Um, should I give, receive an answer by the time this video goes live, I'll put it down in the comments. I'm going to uh, operate under the assumption that this is a Luftschutz mask, because that's the helmet I really want to get, the Luftschutz Gladiator. Um, should it turn out to be these are Reichswehr markings, or um, these are Wehrmacht markings, or something like that, I'll track down something appropriate to display with that. So let's get into the uh, equipment itself now, with the history lesson completed. Let me move this so I have a bit more space. I'm going to talk about the canisters first. As you can see, this canister is a bit taller. And um, this is the Reichswehr canister for the GM-18. Uh, as you can see, it has this metal band here. This was added, so the mass, the canister is essentially cut. And then this was added so it could be extended in length due to the larger filter that the Reichswehr used. It, um, took up too much space, and so they were not able to use the smaller canisters. The GM-18 canister itself was a bit taller than the GM-17 canister, but not by a very large amount. Now, because it's interesting, I'm going to show you all a World War II canister in comparison to these. As you can see, this is significantly taller. The, the uh, General design remained the same, though this did add in these lines along it. Uh, if I can get this one open, you'll see it has, on the inside, it has the compartment for the lenses, the uh, extra lenses. This one has that as well. This one, surprisingly, is lacking that, which I honestly have no idea why that is. I've tried looking into it, I've asked people about it, no one really knows what's going on with this. So it's just one of those mysteries that you come across when collecting. So the, the canisters in function are really exactly the same. They have a few slight 
design differences, this one being a bit larger, this one featuring, like I said, the um, lens container, while this one, for whatever reason, isn't. But the canisters are, for the most part, nearly identical. I do not need to close that because I will not get it back open. Now, now, while I don't have any extra lenses for this, I do have some extra lenses for the GM17. These are the replacement celluloid lenses and um, are nothing fancy, but are an um, excellent part of the kit to have. So, for the um, filters, I think that's a good thing to talk about. This is the 11C11 filter, featuring the pre-filter, which I believe is intended to protect against arsenic. Uh, the um, gas mask lexicon does mention the Blaukreuz, or Blue Cross, which was a type of shell used by the Germans, which would contain a diphenylchlorocene, which was known as a mask embrasure, which I hope my pronunciation is correct on that. It was intended to penetrate through the enemy's masks, caused excessive sneezing, or vomiting, or any number of things. There are a few different chemicals used. Diphenylchlorocene was the main one. It would cause the removal of the mask, at which point the deadlier gases have been sent across. It ended up not working very well, and um, both sides adopted pre-filters to protect against that kind of thing. Well, while it didn't work very well, it is a fascinating piece of history, and while it's a bit too far away to get up and grab it, I will edit in some uh, pictures or some footage or whatever of a vial I have from a Blaukreuz shell. Now, um... This right here is the World War II FE-37 filter. This, this was the uh, first main filter used by the Germans. There was also a civilian version of this known as the, I believe, Hour F. Uh, should I be wrong on that, I will edit that on screen. To get, get into the uh, masks themselves, I actually need to remove the filters to um, better show a few details. Now the face pieces of the masks are near identical along with the filter attachments as you can see these are exactly the same. They even have the same size marking of A2. Both are leather masks, uh, of course, um, as you can tell, both being leather masks. They were made of um, sheepskin and were sealed with oil, though the specific oil I'm unsure of. I should probably move those filters so y'all can see better. The, the uh, Final proper similarity between the two masks um, is the neck strap. This mask featuring a um, full one, this mask featuring a uh, much more deteriorated one that unfortunately has come loose on one side, but both feature the same neck strap. The, the GM18 does feature this neck strap, which I am unsure on whether or not it is original to the World War I mask, or if this is a later edition, I've uh, not been able to find any photographs that um, show whether or not this is part of the original wartime mask or not. The, the head harness on both differs. This, um, well, the gas mask in Respirator Wiki does say that it is a um, six-point head harness. This has five points. I suppose you could argue that this is part of the head harness as well, but I would not say so, and I'll get into that in just a moment. This mask has a six-point head harness to each side, and then as you can see, two down at the front here. So, slightly different head harnesses, but both are fairly close. The um, probably most noticeable difference is in the support strap on front. This would be to um, minimize the sagging of the filter. This one features an adjustable strap, very similar to the actual straps on the head harness. This one features just a simple piece of twine. The, the lenses are different. The GM17 features celluloid lenses with, uh, inside of it there is a wire frame, uh, adding in some support. It is uh, near identical to a TIE Fighter window, which is a comparison I've heard made multiple times. The GM18 features a different lens casing and uh, features glass lenses, though there are some examples still with the old celluloid lenses. There are two final differences between the masks worth mentioning. There is, of course, the XL valve on this, which is a post-war edition, and inside, I'm not going to take the shirt out to show us, put in some extra footage or a picture or whatever, 
There is a um, strap that I believe is to support the chin. I don't know whether or not that is original or post-war edition. Um, I believe it is post-war, though. The, the, the final thing worth mentioning on this GM-18 is not about differences between the masks, but is an interesting piece of history. As you can see, there are a couple small patches on the mask. Uh, hopefully y'all can see that, at least. This mask experienced some repairs. It had, uh, been, it, like I just said, it had been patched. Now, soldiers were allowed up to five patches on the mask before they had to get a new one. And this is the uh, first example, uh, certainly the first example I've seen in person with patches, and one of the few examples I've seen online with patches, both GM-18 and GM-17. So, to have one with the repair work done is a fascinating addition and is um, certainly something that I'm very happy to have. If, if any of the topics discussed in this video interests you, World War I, chemical warfare, um, German equipment, any variation on any of those, um, then uh, I'd recommend sticking around and waiting for my video on the German gas masks of World War I. I'll focus not just on the GM series, but on the earlier fabric respirators, on the breathing apparatuses, on the smoke helmets, several things like that. This video was a bit more uh, improvised than I uh, plan on doing for these, so it was a bit more awkward than I would like. I do apologize for that. Hopefully, by next video, I will have worked out how to best go about making these videos. If you liked the video, please consider leaving a like on it. It really does help, and um, comment down below if you have any further questions on any of these masks, on... Um, collecting, on research, anything like that, I am always glad to help people out with this stuff. If, if you liked what you saw and you want to see more, please consider hitting the subscribe button because, um, again, it really does help. The, the uh, final two things to mention are down in the description. There is a link tree which has uh, two things that may be of interest to y'all. There's my Discord server, where I, where I have channels set up to talk about history and collecting and several things like that. So if you're interested in talking about this stuff, you can hop in and uh, I will always be glad to talk about this stuff. And there's several other people in there who are always glad to talk about it as well. And there's also a link to my Instagram in there where I post all my collection stuff. So you can see all these items and learn a bit about them and everything like that. The final thing to mention is that all the sources I use will be linked or at least listed down in the description with a number corresponding to what pops up on screen whenever one of them is referenced. That's going to do it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll be seeing you.